West Side coolest shorty. Yeah, that's why I stay. Heard you was a lame boy. Get up by my face. And my ex keep calling, swear that she be in the way. And I need a thick red bone, shorty, where I, where I lay, bad in L.A. Told me I should take the trip. Shorty bad as hell, yeah. With the with Cali to the lips. Who for every f***ing word. He's from Savannah, Georgia. He's partnered with companies like SoundCloud, Reebok, and Grey Goose. You may know him from the songs In the Kitchen or For Real. Please welcome Pope Baby to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. That was a hell of an intro, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. So just kind of to start off, what was kind of your first experience with music or how did you first get into that? Uh, okay, so I started doing music in 2016. Um, I never really thought about doing it for real until I heard um, a song, you may have heard it, uh, Made in Tokyo, Uber Everywhere. Yeah. That was the song that made me want to rap for some reason. For some reason, hearing a, hearing and seeing a man possibly my size or shorter because I'm small and, and uh, rapping about everyday life, like, uh, I think the, the first verse is uh, North Side, Cool and Shorty, yeah, that's why I stay. Heard you was a lame boy, get up by my face. And my ex keep calling, swear that she be in the way. And I need a thick red bone, shorty, where I, where I lay, bad in L.A. Told me I should take the trip, shorty, bad as hell, yeah. With the, with the Cali to the lips, who for every word. So when I heard that verse, if I replaced maybe two lines, that was my life. That was my life. I was Ubering everywhere. My ex is def- kept my ex yeah, ex definitely kept calling. Um, Shorty's Shorty's was trying to get me to go to different coasts in the country and all of that. Like that was like I heard that verse and I said, you know what? Maybe I could rap. <laughs> Maybe I could rap. If this could so make it on the ra- if this could make it on the radio and this before the before um Travis Scott got on it, I was like, Oh yeah. If this if this can if a man can blow off of this record, I know I'm good. I can put out three albums of this. I can do that. So just just being able to rap kind of about everyday life and not needing it to be flashy or like talking about millions of dollars, that's kind of what got you into the rap game. Yeah, and I ain't even, I ain't even against that, that you know, the, the, the braggadocious part of like rapping, but something about making average day-to-day stuff sound flamboyant, that just, that's just my, my, my I love it like that. Yeah. And, and so... It makes, me, it makes me feel closer to the artist, too. I really like that stuff. So before hearing that song, before getting into music, was there anything else you think thought you might want to have wanted to do in life? In life? Oh, man. I tell people this all the time. Um, before music happened, my dream, like my personal dream, I wanted to be a general manager at Blockbuster. That's it. I swear. To God, that's all I ever Just wanted to do. Selling be. movies. Selling movies. That's it. I wanted to sell movies and and know it, and know basically every movie and every aisle that was in the store. I wanted to be the cool guy that you see in the horror movies kicking it at the movie store. The one who I'm, who you can got knew the connection with all all the movies, all the good movies, whatever it was, all the new releases. Let's say you 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 uh, you a new guy coming in town and you just want to watch a flick. You come through the blockbuster and you're like, "Hey man, uh, I don't really know what I want to watch. You got any recommendations?" And I got hell of recommendations. I just got, I, I got it all. So that, yeah, that was my dream. But then Netflix happened, so it was no more blockbusters. So <laughs> there was no more blockbusters. There's, there's, I think it's only like three left in the country. So yeah. my, my dream got debunked. <laughs> debunked. So you started releasing music under the name Pope Baby, uh, how did you kind of get that name, or what was the inspiration behind that name? Okay, so, like you were saying earlier, uh, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Uh, the nickname of my city is uh, Seaport, because we have one of the, log- the largest um, export and import, like, yeah. uh, I don't know. The Harbor, specific- docks. Yeah, Harbor, Harbor, yeah. docks. On, like, 
don't know if it's in the country or on the or just the East Coast. Um, so yeah, the nickname for for my hometown is the Seaport, but because of the accent that we have, it comes off as Po. Mm-hmm. So my my name really just means Savannah Bay. That's all it means. Mm-hmm. And so, what kind of tips or advice would you give to rappers or other artists just starting to make music, just starting to get their careers off the ground? Uh, make mistakes as fast as possible. It's bad, like, start f***ing up early. Because once you get to this point, once you get to this point, mistakes aren't very, what's the word? Accepted. Yeah, I would say accepted or like looked at as mistakes. It can be looked at if you make a mistake once you hit a certain point, it'll be looked like like that is the that's the final. That's you are you're only as good as your last mistake. Mm-hmm. It's kind of so like each new mistake kind of leaves a stain on your rep- reputation for the next ex- amount of so time. Exactly. So if you had a place where you don't have a reputation yet, bro, start f***ing up. <laughs> Start f***ing up, learn what you need to do, you know, get your, get your, what I like to say is, uh, you know, get over the speed bumps. There's no such thing as a roadblock, mm-hmm. only speed bumps. There is nothing stopping you. Something can pause, you know, the motion of it, but nothing is stopping you. So I would say, yeah, you know, make, make, make your mistakes early, learn from them and, you know, keep moving, man. And mainly, mm-hmm. you know, believe me yourself. I know that's pretty cliche for artists to tell other artists that, but that's really like once you hit a certain point, like it's really with like brands and corporations. Once that starts coming into the picture, um, a lot of what what me and my team do, we pitch ourselves mm-hmm. to let to know what we're going, what we got going on, and what we plan on doing. So if we don't believe in ourselves, we can't make that pitch and that. That energy comes across either a Zoom call or whether we are having like a face-to-face meeting. Yeah. If we don't believe it, they're not going to believe it and they're not putting no money behind it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and with the fans too. If if, if, yeah, if, you, if you go out to a crowd, like I just did Day in Vegas. I just did Day in Vegas last year. Um, mm-hmm. Never been to Vegas. I flew over it. I rode through it a couple of times, but I never like just been in Vegas. Yeah. And when I but perform a day in Vegas and um yeah, but a crowd of people I've never seen before. Never. On a whole nother coast. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a small town boy from from, from Georgia. And I'm in, I'm in Vegas and it's it's what like sixty hundred people start coming to the stage when I start performing. I've never seen none of these faces. I believed every every lyric that I put in my songs and they felt that. And mm-hmm. by the end of my set, they loved it. And by the end of my set, the uh, day in Vegas posted me on their Instagram because I gave off such a authentic energy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. definitely, like that's that's my that's my that's my number one. That's my number one is believing yourself, and number two, it's, a, it's almost like a family motto: um, build, never beg. Mm-hmm. Never mm-hmm. beg. That's that's my that's my biggest mission statement. One day I'm gonna get it tatted on me. It might be my first tattoo. <laughs> Build never beg. When you when you when you builders never beg, and beggars never build. Mm-hmm. To be to be to believe in yourself means to build internally and externally, and that's how you're gonna get your best results. Having your hand out all the time, you know. It doesn't help you learn how to work for anything or build anything for yourself. For yourself, so definitely build never beg. I would tell everyone that it don't matter. It don't matter if it's an artist, um, if it's an artist, it's, it's someone that's working to be a lawyer, someone that's working to you know get their doctorate or do something in the medical field, whatever. Even if you want to be a, a private contractor, <laughs> build, never beg. You got to learn how to get some of this on your own because no one else. When, when times get rough, it's just going to be you. Yeah, and you got to have that personal infrastructure. So you know, build that, build that up on your own to to be out here in this world and you know thrive. And so, whether it was a mistake that you made early on in your career or anything like that, was there ever anything that kind of made you question your choice to go into music or like make you want to take a break or stop making music? Uh, 
Let me think. That's a good question. No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> That's a good question. There ever been a thing that made me second guess the music? Um, I say the the. I want to say it was the pandemic a little bit, like when it first hit, like when twenty twenty like hit. Mm-hmm. Um, some things were in the, in the works for me at the at the top of the year, and then March happened and everything shut down. Yeah, everything shut down, and I had been. Me, me and my team have been working our ass off for basically a year and a half to get to that point. So when they had them got shut off, I was like, F- "Bro, like <laughs> this is terrible!" Like, yeah. like all we could do was Zoom calls. Nobody was traveling, and that's that's big for 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 a small town artist. For me, I have to be able to. You know, it's, it's it's much more advantageous for me to be able to pull up and sh- give people my energy yeah. and show what I got going for myself. Make connections what, with people. Make connections with people. So knowing that was cut off for like basically most of most of 2020. So that was that's mainly the only thing that ever like made me second guess if I still wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's literally the only thing because when I when I when I started music. When I started music, I kind of knew I was gonna um, get some like some pullback from a lot of people because I was doing the yeah. I was doing the rap about my regular life thing, and that's not like especially in the South where like the the when people think of the South they think of either Outkast or 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 like Lil Baby and like yeah. trap rap, and I. I wasn't on either side of the fence. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't on either side of the fence. So I got a, I got a, I knew I was going to pull back from that. I expected that. Um, yeah, that was, that was, the, that was literally the only thing. It was when everything got, that's when it felt like a roadblock when the pandemic came in. It felt like a roadblock, but it was really just a speed bump. Once I figured out, once I put it in my mind that, hey, we can just build up content and pray that this blows over. That way, when twenty twenty one happens, I'm already I have my whole year set. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly that's exactly what happened. And, and from what I've heard, or like just talking to people, there's usually it goes one way or another. Where like once the pandemic happened, there are people who sat down and were like, you know what, I have nothing else to do. Whatever I'm doing, like in my regular nine to five job, or like music, whatever I want to do. I'm just going to go hard in it, like, do a ton of work for that. Or people who are like, great, this isn't an excuse for me to, like, do nothing for a year. And, like, they were just kind of slacking off, not really doing much in that. And so it's great to see that you took it as an opportunity to continue your career and build up uh, all these songs. Absolutely. I couldn't, yeah, I, I don't. Some about sitting on my couch and being home, I knew for me personally, like, no, nah, that's just not, I'm not wired like that, so... And I, we we figured it out, man. I'm glad we figured it out. That was that was a that was a that was a rough year. That that, was rough. that like will to just keep working, keep doing things. Is, does that just like come from you? Is there or is there someone like in your life, like a family member, friend, someone that has kind of inspired you to be well, like me, that or work harder? Absolutely. For me, my I, I come from a family of hustlers. Like I'm I'm raised. I'm raised by my mom primarily. Mm-hmm. She she had me at 19. She had me at 19, a little short black lady on the east side of Savannah, Georgia. Um, I've watched her move us from a from a bad and worse situation to unimaginable like heights by herself. Mm-hmm. By herself, and it's four of us. She has four boys. We all we calm kids, so it's not like <laughs> it's not like we we just we just you know the house every day. But she has four kids, and she has loved me, and 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 provided me a, a something to look to look up to my entire life. So whenever mm-hmm. I feel like I'm 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 in a slump, I I remind myself that my mom did this. My mom mm-hmm. did this from 19 to, she did this for 20-something years. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. building, building and never back. Literally, that comes from her. And so the pandemic kind of helped contribute to this, but a lot of the music industry and just life in general now has kind of gotten shorter. Artists kind of went from albums to singles and are now kind of just looking for those like 15 second hooks to put in a TikTok that catch on. Do you yeah. kind of find yourself sometimes gravitate like moving towards that or do you try to stay true to who you are and keep that authentic style of rap going? Moving toward, like, you're saying, like, moving toward, like, purposefully having a moment. In like, my, just in my... trying to come up with whatever sounds best or a catchy song rather than just being honest and authentic. No, I, I, I go with my... Mm-hmm. Primarily, I, I, go, I, go with, I go with my heart versus my mind, like, what feels good to me. And then um, I send it off to my team and I, I, let, I let them listen to it and, you know, Ask if they have any notes because some sometimes I can be so tunneled in, tunnel vision in to what I'm doing that I I don't think for the outside looking in. Yeah. Like sometimes I can't do that. So it's good to have a team to um, you know just kind of piggyback off and uh, yeah. yeah yeah no I don't I don't when I, I make they song, just kind of give you notes to like help improve a song or make it better yeah help, help me improve it versus like. We're looking for virality. Yeah, like that's 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 never been my thing. But if a song, I'll say this for in the kitchen. When in the kitchen, uh, when I when I first made it, it was just a, it was just sixteen bars. It was just the first verse. There was no hook. Yeah. Uh, I sent it all to my team, and they said, "Hey, this is nice. This is not. Would you mind putting a hook on it?" They never mentioned TikTok or no anything. Yeah. Just solely to make the song better and to make it, you know, just have more than just 16 bars. Maybe add a hook to it. I added a hook to it in two days and then we dropped in the kitchen and it did wonders yeah. for me for me and the team. So, yeah, nah. When I make music, I don't think about uh, TikTok and, and all of that. No, that, and that's no disrespect to people that do, but... Yeah, no, nah, for me, I'm, I'm a, for me, I want my, I, I see myself being a legacy act mm-hmm. more than, uh, one hit wonder. A, not even a one hit wonder, just, just a, just, just a, I'll say a, a one platform wonder. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. Cause there's a million artists that come out with songs and it pop on TikTok and then they go to do some festival or, or some show and nobody knows who they are yeah. or heard the song or, or or have heard people actually play it in the, on the ox. Well, yeah, and TikTok has that feature where, like, you go to someone's profile, they have a button to link to the Instagram, and there are so many times they got, like, one million, two million people on TikTok. You go to their Instagram and they're in, like, the tens of thousands on Instagram. And so... Right. So, yeah, I just... That, that, that's my only, like pull back on it a little bit is I don't want to be become too I'm trying I've been trying to figure out the too word like focused on one platform almost or like I would focus on one platform my my biggest thing me and my me and my team biggest thing or one of the biggest things is building community in real life mm-hmm. because like when I go to a LA or a New York I don't want to depend on the platform to do everything for me because it's still <laughs> for some for some people they don't use TikTok. They still listen to the radio. Yeah. They'll read art they still read articles. They still they still want to hear what their friends play on the ops. Mm-hmm. They still look for cool things in different ways versus what's the popular way to look for cool and different things. Yeah. So yeah, me personally I like building connections and building community with people. I like going out to LA. Hanging out, hanging out with City James and and the, and the Basswood crew. I like going to New York, going to MoMA, walking around and you know, peeping the energy and feeling the vibe and connecting with people. Even when I'm out here in that, I'm based in Atlanta. Even when mm-hmm. I'm out here in Atlanta, like I like, I like going to the movies with creators. Yeah, yeah. go to the movies and go watch some shit and talk about shit and build build community in a in a 
authentic way versus like depending on a platform to do everything for you. I don't I don't ever want to become an artist. Yeah. And so like when when you've sent songs to your team kind of for feedback for those notes, have there ever been a moment where like they've recommended something or sent something back that you didn't really agree with or like have you guys ever clashed on ideas? Uh I don't think it's a clash. I think it's I think it's mainly it's me it's me and Donnie. Me and my me and my business partner and manager, Donnie. As far as like when I send music out, that's like the first person I send it out to outside of like my like my friends' friends, people I grew up with. And yeah. Like so, like when I send it to him, uh, usually, usually he tells me like, "Yo, this is amazing!" Like, just you know, give it, give it, give it a little bit more umph or something like that, or or maybe, maybe, maybe he'll send me like a reference, a reference track, not a reference track. Um, a song from like 2003 and like, and like just want to just put more yeah. context to the, to the thing that I'm doing or, or give me some help with navigating the thing I'm about to do with the song. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, has there ever been a time where like I sent him a song and, and he sent me something and he wasn't, he, he told me something and I just disagreed? Uh, no. I'll say no, but there has been times uh, I've sent a song incomplete, yeah. and I, <laughs> and he might judge the incomplete work as if it's final, mm-hmm. and I have to let him know, hey, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Give me like <laughs> two, three more weeks, so I'm just letting you know where I'm at right now with it. Mm-hmm. And then after the two, three weeks, I send him the close to the final version, and it's like, yeah, we putting that one out. Mm-hmm. That's that's. I have no, I have no, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And so okay. when you're coming up with a new song, like before you even reach that incomplete stage, how do you first like sit down and start a song? Do you kind of have a formula of like beat first, then lyrics, or is it just kind of waiting to see what happens and waiting to see if a song forms? Yeah, I got a couple different formulas. The main one I've been doing lately, as of recently, like I'll, um, Excuse me, I'm burning today. <laughs> what would I? What I do? Um, I cut on. I cut on some 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 background music that has nothing to do with what I'm what I'm planning to record or or even me. Before I even think about recording, I'll just cut on some background music. It's usually Black Eyed Peas or Fergie. Mm-hmm. I cut on that. Uh, cut on some glamorous G L A M. I started running around the room, two-stepping, getting my dance on, listening to the shit, Ludacris come on, and then uh, the beat, whatever, whatever the song may be, the song, the the, the lyrics the lyrics and the verses might be over with, right? So it's no more vocals, it's just beat for like 30 seconds. In that, in that 30 seconds, I'll come up with a whole new flow that could have worked for this song. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll voice record it, go through the beats, go through the beats that I already have. People send me beats all fucking day. <laughs> they send me beats all day. It was a beautiful, it's a beautiful headache because <laughs> I could have no beats. But yeah. people, all day, I go through the beats. When I find something that fits the pocket that's in my mind and the, and the, the already like natural rhythm I got going on like in that moment, I'll write to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Whole thing out, two, three verses, hook, whole nine, go to the studio, lay it down in like an hour. Lay it down in an hour because I already done rehearsed it in my head for three days straight. <laughs> so now I can just go and perform it in the studio. Go to the studio, record it. Uh, uh, record it. Come back home after recording and listen to it. Listen to it and then uh, write some notes down and take some mental notes on things I want to change, things I want to rearrange in the beat. Cause I do a lot of I do a lot of the arranging in my in my uh, in my songs too. Mm-hmm. To fit to fit the like, thing that I'm going in my head. Yeah. So I'll do that and then after about eight or nine different versions, like I find like. 
this is the song. This is the song I wanted in my head. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a, it's a, that process is a little, <laughs> it's depending on like how I naturally feel versus like thinking too much. Yeah. But it's definitely been the one that's been helping me write songs the fastest and, uh, you know, structuring it, structuring it with intention. That's, that's been the big thing these past, just really these past two years. Like I just been recording with intention. Mm-hmm. Where, where do I, where do I, where do I want this song or where do I see the song being played? Who do I see playing it? Why are they playing it? <laughs> Why are they playing it? And like, yeah, like that. So that, yeah, that's been my process lately. But if it's not that process, then I just put on the beat at the studio, freestyle, <laughs> freestyle, come back home and then kind of do the same thing. I was just saying, where I, I've, yeah. I've notes, rearrange things, go back to the studio, write it all the way through, and then it comes out. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of mentioned before even making a song, you're just kind of listening to all these different artists. So does that kind of, in your music, do you help that inspire you or like use inspiration from that? Or do you try uh, to keep it your own unique sound? Hey, hell no. Hey, man, I, the biggest thing that's unique about me is that I'm able to change my tone so much. I can do the, yo, what's going on? And mm-hmm. I can do the, hey, what's going on? Like I can, I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can change my tone a lot, and my accent cuts through with those tones differently. So it almost feels like it's a whole different person yeah. on each, or a different vibe, or like the whole shit. So like, but as far as like, I was told this once before. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. If you think you're coming up with something that is completely original. Like completely, completely original. Like no one has ever thought of this. You don't understand how many people don't live on this earth. Yeah. So like, I don't even think to myself to be original no more. But I don't copy either. I think to myself, I want to innovate the thing that made me feel good when I heard this song. Mm-hmm. Whether you that kind of want to put like your own touch or your own style on it. Put my own touch and put my own feel on it, or. or or reintroduce the thing that I feel like is missing in music today. Mm-hmm. Which in a lot, of, honestly, today, I just feel like it's just being happy and, like, feeling good and, like, you know, reaffirming, re- re- reassuring yourself that things are going to be okay. I rarely hear that nowadays. Yeah. What I hear nowadays in rap can be, which is no no knock to them, because I'd be listening to that too and it'd be sounding hard. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it'd be... This shoot that nigga. I'm about to I'm, I'm about to take drugs and fuck my whole life up. Like it'll be that for like a whole hour. For a whole god <laughs> I feel alone. It's terrible. The whole nine, which is cool. Some of those some of those some of those things I do feel personally as well. Sometimes I do feel alone and shit like that. But the thing that has always pulled me out of the gutter out of the gutter is me telling myself, I'm going to be okay. This is a part of my process. Yeah. This is what I manifested for, what I asked for, what I prayed for, and this is the shit that come with it. Yeah. So like so like having that feeling in the music is the thing I've I've since day one I've always wanted to kinda of to go back to the made in Tokyo Uber everywhere. Like Brett never said he was a broke <laughs> He just said he liked he liked the Uber everywhere and and, and smoke weed and put on flash without being t- too cocky, which yeah. is nothing wrong with cocky at all. But yeah, like that's that the thing that made me feel good about music in two thousand three is what I like making people feel and every year I make music. I don't even want to put a date on my music. Yeah. Every year. That you're going to be okay. This shit feel, you're going to be okay. What's happening right. right now is supposed to happen and it's going to get better. And so out work. So you like do you have any one moment or any one thing that kind of gives you that optimistic view on life? Or? Man. Uh, if it's not movies, it's video games. And if it's not video games, it's TV, man. It's TV. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm too, uh, 2000 pop culture for my own good, which makes me super optimistic. But like a moment, I'll say, 
It's a couple different moments. So, there's a rapper named Flavor Flav. He had a reality love show called Flavor of Love. That man is bunky butt, ugly, terrible looking. That's a terrible looking. That's a terrible looking man. That man is. T- that's a terrible looking man. But he had forty. He had forty. Forty pretty women ready to be with that man. When I seen him, that should let me know I'm going to be good with women forever. I'm gonna be Gucci. That's that's one thing that made me feel good. Every time I see that, like, even if I was having a relationship, probably was like, bruh, if he got forty, I know I'm gonna have a hundred waiting outside. If this don't work, I know I'm gonna have a hundred waiting outside. That's one. Um, number two, um, Skate Two. It's a game. Skate Two that came out on the 360 and the PS3. Skate Two made me feel like the world was mine. The world was mine because all I had was a skateboard. Mm-hmm. That's where you feel like I could take on any city, any challenge, especially when, like, your whole objective is to complete challenges all day. So, like, that shit made me feel really good about, like, just being outside and doing and building community and, like, going outside to go hang out with friends. Like, that way it don't feel all pointless. Like, you're doing it with intention. Mm-hmm. So, skate did a lot for me with that. Um... Fergie's debut album. <laughs> Fergie's debut album did a lot for me. Um, coming up, but that's glamorous. Big girls don't cry. Fergalicious, uh, clumsy. London Bridge. Finally, like that album. The Fergie album right now on Twitter. My hitter is Make Fergie Proud. <laughs> like that, her debut album mm-hmm. to this day still makes me feel good. Yeah. So, like, yeah, as far as moments, it's usually, like, movies, games, television, and just hanging out with friends, man, mm-hmm. kicking it, and loving yourself, and my family. Like, I'm, I'm, I get the, I get the blessing and the privilege of waking up to love every day. Mm-hmm. A lot of people can't, you know, can't, a lot of people don't, don't wake up to that. And I can, mm-hmm. I, you can hear that in their music and all of that, but I'm a person that does wake up to that. And I, I will brag about that every day. I love that. That boost, that's my caffeine every single day. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. So as far as moments and things that just, you know, give me that feeling of like, bro, I'm that nigga, bro. <laughs> I'm the guy. Like, it's my day-to-day life. It's, 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 it's the energy I'm taking in versus, not versus, like, whether it's, Television and then like media, you know what I'm taking it all positive all the time. Or it's my family, so it's like my real life is positive too. Mm-hmm. And so, on top of all your music and whatnot, you're also the co-owner of Clubhouse Music, right? What's that? Can you tell us a little bit more about that and why you feel so strongly about it? So I, I give you the backstory. Um, I met Donnie, my business partner, Donnie Slater. Um, at a showcase, at a showcase, I think it was called a Georgia Media Showcase. Burpee again, excuse. Me. Uh, in um 2018, 2018, I was creating a buzz around uh, Savannah. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> good. Around Savannah, and um, he caught wind of it. Um, he came through to one of the showcases. And uh, he seen the energy that I brought to the crowd and everyone was with me. He hit me up. I think he DM'd me and was like, hey, bro, um, whenever you get a, whatever, whenever you come to Atlanta, because he was living in Atlanta at the time, uh, tap in with me. Mm-hmm. I told him, bro, I live in Atlanta. He was like, oh, for real? Like, yeah. So we, um, we met up and we shared some words. And um, he was like, bro, what's your energy, man? Like, Whenever I tap back in on the music side, so at the time he was mainly just working on um, um, his marketing firm called Backyard. Mm-hmm. He was kind of removed from the music scene for a little bit, but he knew he wanted to uh, come back in. He wanted to work with somebody who he felt was like, who wanted to be just as bad as him. Yeah. So he met me. We got the ball rolling a little bit. This is a little before like we started Clubhouse. And... uh. As 
we started working, you know, knocking things out and, and knocking down some uh, some milestones. Uh, it was like, hey man, you wanna uh, you wanna start a company? And then we started Clubhouse. And um, the biggest thing I, I think he was trying to put in my head at the time that we started it was um, a lot of a lot of artists these days um, don't really have ownership. Don't really have yeah. ownership. Don't know about the publishing. They don't know about the masters. They don't know. And they don't know about syncs and licensing and, and, and all of that. And he wanted. He knew if, if we started working. He didn't want me to be the only or me and him to be the only rich off music in Savannah. He wanted to he wanted someone to learn with him so that we can give it back to, to the other creatives in Savannah yeah. that wanted it too. So as far as Clubhouse goes, it's more like, it is a business and I am a, and I am a, a, a co-owner in it, but it's like a lifestyle. Like, mm-hmm. it's definitely a lifestyle. It's like, knowing what you want to do, why you want to do it, who you doing it for, who you doing it with, what's your intentions behind everything, Are you do you really, really want to do this? And how much work are you really willing to put into it? So with me and him, we've been hitting the ground running since me and him decided we was gonna make a we was gonna do a company together. Yeah. On all cylinders. And and uh And it's just I, like the the common saying, everyone wants to be a millionaire, but no one wants to put in the work together. No one wants to put the work in and and it's and it's it's dope. It's dope being working with with someone who wants it just as bad as you. That is just that's that's some dream team Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen type. Like that's some Kobe Shaq. Because like, we both just keep keep getting each other to keep one up in what you've done and go to the next level. Yeah, and with me and his dynamic, I'm not his yes man. He's not my yes man. We both think of things a little differently, but we have more similarities than differences. Mm-hmm. And that is just, it just works. Like, I don't know the science behind how it works between me and him. Because uh, even, even in our own, like, before we met each, before we met each other type, like, a lot of these things we try to do didn't work with other people. Yeah. Worked with me and him. So I'm forever, I'm forever grateful that, 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 that we saw something in each other at a mutual time. Because mm-hmm. that definitely could have been a, a a thing we passed up on. So yeah, that's that's clubhouse, man. And so if you ever kinda got like a once in a lifetime like dream chance to you just gotta pick like to make a song with any artist in the world, who who would it be if you have an answer? I wanna say Fergie. But I'm a, I'm afraid it's gonna happen too quick and I ain't gonna be ready yet. So <laughs> I wanna say <laughs> with anybody I would say I would love to make a song with Freddie Mercury um, from yeah. Queen, band Queen. I would love to work with Freddie Mercury. I love Freddie Mercury. And um, Majid Jordan, who signed to um, OVO, I think they're really dope. Um, I think they're dope as fuck. Um, yes, Fergie. <laughs> yes, bro. I would love to work with Fergie. Um it's a couple more. It's like two. It's like two more people I want to work with. Uh, of course, of course, Pharrell, Tyler Creator, Yay, and all of them. That's like everyone want to work with them. Like yeah. that ain't even <laughs> everyone want to work with them. But I really want to work with uh, those three and Big Boy, Big Boy from Outkast. I ain't ready for for Andre Three Thousand verse. I ain't ready for that yet. He going, he going. I'm trying. To <laughs> Uh, I, you're, you're trying to balance like a dream collaboration with like reality. <laughs> yeah, I ain't even, woo, really out here in Atlanta. You might run into all these like, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I ain't there yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, soon though. So I think those that's a solid three though. But mainly like outside of like artists, I would really like to work with like just more brands. Like I, I, because working with artists is cool. I love that, but. Working on something that I know that I can, that is tangible, and I can bring it back to Savannah. 
Mm-hmm. It's like that, that just that, I wish I wish I seen it like that when I was an eight year old on the east side. I wish I saw it like that. I wish I wish my, my favorite artist or uh, artist from my hometown was working with a Dickies, a Vans, a Nike, a Reebok, uh yeah. a Jack Daniels or just something I know I could I can put on the shelf in my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really want to work with General Mills. I want I want I want to be on the, on the top of a uh, a cereal box. I need that. I need that. That I want to I want to work with Dickies. I wear Dickies all the time. Um, and it's like that's like the culture where I'm from. Like, cause in I don't I don't where you based at? I'm based in New York. You based in New York? Uh, yeah. You from New York? No, I'm from Los Angeles. From California. So when you was going to school, did you have to wear uniforms? No. No. So, which is also a blessing. <laughs> in Savannah, in I'm Savannah, guessing you did. Yeah, in Savannah you have to wear uniforms. Like you got to wear like a polo shirt and like some khakis. near slacks. So like the the coolest way to pull off uniforms down there is dickies. You put on <laughs> you put on some dickies. It don't really matter what color. You put on some Dickies, you put on some fresh kicks, and you're killing it on the first day of school. So I would love to work with Dickies. I would love to just innovate all the things that's part of my culture in Savannah and just make that fly. Mm-hmm. Make that fly. And so, so yeah. on, to- on top of that question, would you have, like, any venue or arena that you would just love to play or, like, a festival slot that you would love to play? No. Yeah, it's a good question, man. Ain't nobody like to me that, man. All right, so with this, I'm assuming I'm selling that bitch out, right? Yeah. Just saying, this ain't I'm just performing there. And it's, it's, it's 30 people at Staples Center. Crypto, <laughs> ar- my bad. Crypto Arena. <laughs> so Not going to get used to that. Never. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. Assuming, assuming I'm selling that bitch out, I would love to perform. It has to be a festival, like, that's current now. Well, just... Uh, it could be a festival or also just like playing an arena or like a venue, just any venue that you would love to play at. I would love to do Staples Center, aka Crypto Arena. <laughs> I would love to do that. I would love to sell that out. I would love to do um in my hometown they just built up they just built up the new arena. It's called the In Market Arena. Um I think Raw Wave just, just sold it out last night. Mm-hmm. Super dope. Um I would love to sell that out. I would love to do I would love to headline Lollapalooza. I would love to headline Coachella. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. If this, I would. If this shit was two thousand three, I would have loved to done um, Spring Bling for one hundred six in Park. I would have loved to <laughs> loved to done that. I would have loved to have done uh, Woodstock ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Ninety nine, the one with DMX looked like he was performing to the whole country. Yeah, <laughs> I would have loved to have done that. And um, uh, live aid when Queen did it, in, I think it was 1985. And like it was like I don't know. three, like yeah, man, like like that. I would love to do. Mm-hmm. I would love to do that. First thing I like to do, I know like can happen in this in my my realm of living. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, definitely Staples, Crypto Arena, <laughs> Crypto Arena. Lollapalooza, Coachella, and the In Market Arena back home. Mm-hmm. Love to do that. And so, like, from your career, from your albums, is there a song that you've made that is your favorite, or do you just kind of like them all? I like most of them. Because a lot of, I, I would say a lot of my 2021 releases, a lot of people don't know, a lot of those songs mm-hmm. were old, way older. So, with this new project, that I'm working on, uh, Turtle Cross. Um, I think my favorite song. I have to sing you the project too. I, I got to sing you the, the project that's about to drop. Um, the song I like the most out of all my songs that are out right now. Um, it's either Different Pope, which is the intro to the Pope Day EP. Mm-hmm. I really that song. Um, Yamakura Yeti, which is on the Pope Baby EP, and oh, I love yams. 
I love each version of yams. Um, in the kitchen is like my number six because I know we worked that bitch for a while, so that got annoying. <laughs> yeah. got, got annoying. It got annoying. You you would end up working on it and be like this song again. <laughs> Number six on the list because I just, it just became too. I just heard it way too much, which is a good thing to have. Yeah. Where you hearing it oh, way too much. Um, I think those are my favorites. Oh, and Brand's outro, Brand's outro. I think that's the the outro on the Pope Day EP. That's my favorite song out of every song I have right now. Mm-hmm. But set it up is my number two. Set it up is my number two for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, well. Those are some good choices. <laughs> What's your favorite? My favorite? I I gotta be honest. I really liked For Real when I was listening to that. Really? I I did, yeah. It was just... Yeah. I don't know what, what about it, but I just listened to that and, like, almost immediately, like, added it to my, like, songs. Like, I just felt like it was a song that I could listen to again. That's beautiful. I, I really I do like for real. My my only issue is for real. Not that it's an issue. It's just a personal thing. When I when I when I make songs and I'm and I'm talking about like the lows because mm-hmm. you know it's high lows. Yeah. When I'm talking about the lows that have happened in my life, or like sometimes if I hear it too many times, it makes me sad. <laughs> And I don't be wanting to be sad all the time. Yeah, and so I, I get that. I get that. But, like, I do just like songs being real, being authentic with the people listening to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. And a, and a being sad was the was 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 an authentic thing that was put on the song. Absolutely, man. I think it's all fair game on, like, you know, liking whatever song that I have. I'm glad that you like one. I think every, I think we've been saying this for, like, for like two years now, everyone likes at least one Poe Baby song. <laughs> at least one. There, there's a Poe Baby song for everyone. There's a Poe Baby song for everyone. If you like West Coast, we got West Coast. If you like Down South, we got Down South. If you like Sad, Sad got the trap ballads like for real and, and losing it, we got those too. So, yeah, no, that's that's beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm for real. Right. <laughs> and for real, really, because I hadn't dropped since... I had dropped since September up to uh, set it up, and for real has been because we didn't promote for real at all. Yeah, we didn't put no video out, no nothing, and that has still been keeping his daily streams every day. To the point that's about to be my 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 second big. I think it is my second biggest song right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then like set it up about to be like my third one, and we did nothing for for real, so. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. nice seeing somebody that actually like for real. I, I, I never saw a person who actually said really? something about for real. Mm. Right. Not yet. First one to do it. You're definitely the pioneer. Because right. some is, I think for a lot of artists, like it's cool to see like the stream numbers. Yeah. But you know, seeing a person that likes it, that. that it does a different thing. It's the difference between a number on a screen and like a person in the real world, and so hearing that you added it to a playlist is like, damn, bro! Like people really do. This. Even though we see like we on the, on the back end of, of like Spotify, art, see you can see um, what people added to playlists and yeah. who added to when you can meet a person. It's like this is a real thing. <laughs> This is a real thing, and that's that's beautiful, man. I'm glad you like for real. Mm-hmm. All right, well, those are all the questions I had for you today. So, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a great time. What do you have coming up? Where can people find you? Anything you got on the internet? Where can people find you? All right, so Instagram and Twitter. Instagram, you can find me um, P O T E B A B Y S Po Babies. Uh, so if you type Po Baby, it's the it's gonna be the mother with the blue check. <laughs> Gotta flex the verified check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the blue check. That is me. 
uh, Twitter is uh, it's just Pope Baby, P O T E B A B Y. Um, Snapchat, my Snapchat been going crazy lately. It's been going, <laughs> it's been going crazy lately. I'm doing Snapchat, but I'm getting like hella subscribers. Uh, Pope Baby on Snapchat. Um, Pope Baby's on Triller. If you look at my name, it's gonna be the mother the blue check. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna go to Blue Jay, and then, uh, oh yeah, uh, on on any any streaming platform, any DSP is uh, Po Baby. Two words: P O T E B A B Y. And yeah, uh, what's happening next? Uh, going on tour soon. Going on tour with Earth Gang in the summer. All right. All right. Earth Gang in my house. That's gonna be really dope. Um, we have Po. We we doing our third annual Po Day this year in September. Um, partnering up with SoundCloud, that's gonna be beautiful. Um, yeah, just more more cool on the way. Uh, when does this come out? When does this, this will probably come out sometime next week? Sometime next week. All right. So, Brown Sugar, uh, Brown Sugar is about to drop, or at this, by the time this comes out, it's already dropped. That's gonna be crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> I gotta speak in present tense. That is. Um, and uh. My next EP drops May twenty eighth. Right. Yeah, May Turtle Crossing. Um, all new songs. There's not one old song on this month. And this, it's right now. It's it's my favorite project that I've ever made out of all out of my six years of rapping. Yeah. All my right. Favorite. Well, definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much again for coming on. And yeah, I appreciate it. I'll man. leave a Thank link to all that down below. Some people can check yeah, it out. Yeah, do that below, man, and subscribe. Don't be crazy. Subscribe. This young man got his shit together. From California all the way to New York. Yeah. <laughs> nah, right. I appreciate you. Thank right. you for coming on. It's been great. Nah, yeah, same. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.